and here derive the equation for the radioactive decay. To do this, assume we have um, a certain radioactive element, say rubidium-87, and initial amount of this isotope, say for example 1000 of these isotopes. Now after a certain time, say one second, a certain amount of this isotope decays, say 400. So in delta N of 400 rubidium-87 isotopes decay, which means we need to subtract this from the initial amount, and then um, we can calculate that the remaining 600 or 687 rubidium isotopes remain. We can also do this for different systems, say 147 samarium, which has a longer half-life, which means that after one second, fewer isotopes decay, maybe 200, so we subtract this from 1,000 and calculate that 800 samarium-147 isotopes remain. Or a fast decay system like aluminum-22, with maybe 900, of course, should be much more, much higher. Um, but maybe it's just 900, they decay and 100 remain. Then, of course, in the next time step, the amount of material that decays will be a little bit lower because there's not, there, there's not a thousand um, of the parent, but a little less, for example, in rubidium, there's not a thousand, but now 600, and the amount that decays is then also fewer which means there's a certain proportionality, a relationship between um, the amount of material that can decay and the amount of material that is present. And this relationship can be written as, so this delta N is the amount of material that decays, for example, 400 um, rubidium-87 isotopes in a certain amount of time, say maybe one second. And this, of course, depends on how much of this material is present at a certain time T1, for example, if this is T1. And as said, this is the amount of material that is subtracted, therefore the minus sign, this is the amount of subtracted from the initial. So we subtract 400 from the initial 1000, and then we know how much of the rubidium-87 is still present. However, at the second time, say T2, and maybe only 100 um, of the isotopes are left, and of course, from the rubidium, there's only 40 that will decay from samarium-20 and aluminum-90. And according, there's a few left. So there's from rubidium, there's 60 left, samarium-80 and aluminum-26. There's 10 of the um, respective isotopes less, left. So you can, the equation would look the same. It's delta N divided by delta T. Again, minus because that's what we subtract. So in case of rubidium, this is 40. This is proportional then to the amount that is present at T2, which in this case is 100 and previously would have been 1000 here. And again, this is then what we, the amount of material that we subtract to what is present at this time. So in this case, then we subtract 40 from 100 and calculate that 600 is left. And it's a proportionality, but now we really want to calculate the proper amounts which I already did, because for rubidium, um, 400 are subtracted, so there's a factor of 0.4. For samarium, 200 are subtracted, so there's a factor of 0.2, and aluminum is a factor of 0.9. Now these kind of factors are basically the proportionality factor that we can just call, for example, lambda. And then this becomes, of course, an equation, and this is the first the first instance of our decay equation, which is then delta n divided by delta t minus here in front equals lambda n of t. And as it is written, it means the amount of material decaying in a certain amount of time. But we want to know it in an infinitesimal small amount of time, which is why we write here dn divided by dt a minus in front of here equals lambda n of t. And what we then see here, if we rewrite this a little bit, if we write this as a derivative, then this means this is um, minus n prime of t equals lambda n of t. Now this is a first decay equation here, and we can see it's a differential equation because we have here a function, and here we have the derivative of this function here. And when we now solve this equation, which um, I will do with a math program, which makes the 
a little bit simpler, we will get um, the final decay equation. So here in this math program, I really write uh, the equation exactly as I just derived it. So I write here minus n, oops, minus n prime of t equals, and then lambda times n of t. So this is exactly the equation I just showed you. And I make it d solve, which is the command to solve differential equations. And then I need to indicate what the functions I want to solve for, which is nt and the parameter. And then I get the result. And this is the result of, uh, for, this, for this equation. nt uh, is e to the minus t times lambda, or e to minus lambda t, as we know it from cosmic chemistry. And then there's also a constant, and this constant is important because this constant indicates the initial composition, the initial amount, like for example, a thousand rubidiums or a hundred, aluminum 26 or so. So if I would write this um, sort of final version of this uh, equation, it would be n of t equals, and then e to minus lambda t with the initial amount, which is usually designated as n0. And we can also just copy this here. We can also check whether this makes sense. Say at uh, t equals 0, is this really then 0? So if t is 0 here and t is 0 here, and then 0 times uh, 0 times lam minus lambda is 0, and e to 0 is 1, which means at n0 we have n0. So this is all correct. And this is why we need the, the n0 here, which is coming also from this differential equation. So this is how we can quite straightforward derive the decay equation from some initial um, rather simple considerations.